Mary and Elton Curtis are living in a telecommunications nightmare that features a big dose of corporate buck passing. The couple have had their phone lines disconnected almost 30 times. Problem is, their calls for help continue to fall on deaf ears. 7th of June, no phones again. 27th of June, no phones, no facts. 14th of August, three days without phone service. 3rd of September, another three days. It may be no an phone. Australian record, but it's driving them crazy. We have a telephone problem. We're disconnected regularly. In eight years, 28 to 30 times. It has driven me to distraction on occasion. The blood pressure goes up, the smoke comes out of the ears. 28 times in eight years? No wonder Mary and Elton Curtis reckon they're living in the dark ages. They have two phone numbers at home, including one for Elton's business. But often, all they hear is the sound of silence. It's a marketing business which demands communications. And without a phone, you're without communication. It's as simple as that. The money, the stress. But every month they pay their telco, AAPT, $55 for line rental. But here's the problem. That company doesn't own the phone lines. Telstra does. And Telstra is supposed to keep them working. But Telstra won't even talk to this family. They tell me they don't, they cannot deal with me because we're not customers of Telstra. We must raise the issue with AAPT. Here's how the system works. Mary finds a working phone and she calls AAPT and she tells them her problem. AAPT then call Telstra and they tell them Mary's problem. Telstra then have a look in their diary, work out a date when they can fix Mary's phone and they call AAPT back and they give them that date. AAPT then call Mary and they give her the good news. It's a merry-go-round, but that's the communications business. Telstra tells them, oh, two, three, four days, whatever it is, and uh, AAPT respond to us then by telling us, sorry guys, you're, going, you're not going to have your phones for four or five days. But what could be causing such disruptions? Mary's kept a list of reasons she's been told. The wires are corroded. Then there's a fault at the exchange. The line charge is down. There's earth on the line. There's a fault present at the base. In the last seven years, uh, we've received 13 registered faults uh, from AAPT to us. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, that have been registered that we haven't received. Here, the plot thickens. Telstra's Jeremy Mitchell counterclaims that AAPT must be at fault for not telling Telstra about half the problems that have occurred. Whether it's 28 or 13, it's still a lot of problems, isn't it? Look, we are always concerned when people can't make telephone calls mm. because we're in the business of making sure they do make telephone calls. Does Telstra deprioritise people who aren't direct clients of Telstra? No, not at all. There are very strict rules about this. So what about AAPT? Both AAPT and Mary are at the mercy of Telstra. The issue relates to the infrastructure in the area for which Telstra is wholly responsible. Very much the meat in the sandwich. Neither of them really solving our problem. And in a further statement sent to us, AAPT says it will continue to lobby Telstra on behalf of Mary and Elton.